Welcome back guys. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about the general characteristics of spirochetes and what are the different examples of spirochetes we'll be dealing in the future videos. Okay, so let's begin. So let's first take uh, the floating tools out here. Yeah, okay. Now let's talk about... Let's, okay. Let's go. Now, spirochetes. So what are spirochetes? Now, spirochetes are small, motile, and slender, helically coiled, and flexible kind of bacteria. So, it's a mouthful of things, right? So, let me talk about each of these things. They are very, very small. They are motile, and they are a kind of gram-negative in nature. So, they are a kind of gram-negative in nature, kind of bacteria. They are small and motile because they are having flagella. They are having flagella that's why you term them as motile but the flagella they are having is a kind of different type of flagella because the flagella they are having so let me change the color in this case okay the flagella they are having are intracellular intracellular in nature that's a new thing uh, you hear about flagella right because what we know about flagella is that if this is a cell flagella is coming out of it so most of the time the flagella is extracellular that means the flagella is coming outside so it is from the cell and it is coming out so it's a out or extracellular flagella but in this case we are seeing that this flagella is intracellular in nature and what what do we mean by intracellular we'll be looking at in the next slide and they are flexible in nature they are a kind of a, a screw like structure of their body they are a kind of helical so they are a kind of helical or spiral structure that's why they are called spirochetes because they are having the spiral structure in their body okay and they require very special kind of straining usually they are kind of gram negative type uh, because they are having cell wall and very thin cell wall or very thin uh, peptidoglycan wall but they are having the three membranes or not three actually two different membranes so, so the arrangement will be like the internal membrane then the peptidoglycan layer and outside is a third uh, layer which is a extracellular membrane so these are the arrangement for the spirochetes but they cannot be stained using normal gram negative stain usually we need to visualize them in dark field or fluorescent microscopy or using silver stain to stain them right now if you stain them with gm stain uh, it can also be seen now here borrelia is a type of spirochetes we'll be talking uh, later in those case of borrelia staining we need to use gm staining but we shouldn't use simple gram staining to look at them now come to the general characteristics now they are elongated motile we have already talked about that and they are having what we call intracellular flagella or endoflagella right because the flagella is originated inside the cell and it is traveling through the cell inside the cytoplasm this flagella is also called as axial filament right now in this picture this this picture is uh, telling you what kind of flagella we are talking about let's say this this is the spiral body now this spiral body inside it we are having cytoplasms and outside this body we are having you can see the for protoplasmic cylinder and outside it we are having the membrane or cell membrane now there in the middle we are having a very thin peptidoglycan layer throughout this place. very thin peptidoglycan layer right now outside we are having you can see the outer membrane now the flagella as you can see originates from one terminal uh, site of this uh, in the, of this bacteria and it is traveling throughout the body to the another end of the bacteria and it is holding this to these two different terminal of the bacteria tightly as a result the bacteria is a kind of coiled or a kind of spiraled on its own right that's that's giving this bacteria that the typical spiral shape okay and uh, as you can see this this flagella is moving uh, through the cell actually moving through the cell because if we can uh, this this uh, this particular part inside is not only the cell if we want to talk about uh, this spirochete the whole part the whole part that means this whole region is containing the cell membrane is will be called as, as spirochete so inside that we are having our flagella right so that's why we call them endoflagella and this flagella is called as axial filament right if we cross it and if you look at the top view of this cross section what we can see that yes this is a cylindrical body and cytoplasm and all these things from this cytoplasm and it is surrounded by this cell membrane outer membrane now here in between the gap between the cytoplasm and the outer membrane the axial filaments originates and it is traveling right now in this picture it is kind of very much clear that as you can see here that it is a kind of spiral 
you can see it's a kind of spiral so if this is the whole body and the, you can see these are the regions these are the regions uh, for our flagella it is coming it is coming from this section for example it is going towards another terminal of the bacteria right so that's a kind of uniqueness of the spirochetes in whole different type of spirochetes we are going to find this kind of endoflagella or axial filament they are structurally complex and they are having central protoplasmic cylinder we have already seen and it is bounded by uh, it is bounded by a cytoplasmic membrane and a cell wall we have already talked about that now larger spirochetes are gram negative in nature other are too thin to be seen in the light microscopy so we need to use dark ground microscope or it is also called as dgm or dark ground microscopy we can also use fluorescent microscopy for for the visualization purpose now the classification of spirochetes now we can divide actually three different type or three different genera of the spirochetes based on their clinical significance right so all of them all of the three uh, can cause severe infections in human being first one is a tryponema second one is leptospira and third one is borrelia now these are the three different genera now they are having different species like and uh, among those species tryponema pallidum is uh, one of the dangerous Thing. Leptospira as well as Borrelia is having several species. Among them, Borrelia burgdorferi is uh, very dangerous. So, so all of them they can they are potent uh, pathogen for human beings. So that's why uh, they catch our as attention, right? Now, others are found in water, sewage, and in mouth and genital tract of human being, right? So usually they present uh, they are present in uh, environmental regions they found in water and sewage if it is not properly treated if the sewage water is properly not treated and it is returning to our home again and we use them then it can also be found in our mouth and genital tracts and all these things and they are related with maximum stds or sexually transmitted diseases so that's why they are uh, very very important to study and if we look at the morphological characteristics what are the difference we can see that as we are seeing the larger one are borrelia so among all of them borrelia is a kind of large and it is having a very flat kind of spiral now as we are going smaller like spirillum it is very very small, short but it is having very curvy nature leptospira is having uh, the most curvy nature among all and it is a kind of uh, at the end it is a kind of round shape at the end like that and triponema is a basic kind of carbness as as we can see that almost triponema leptospira is a kind of uh, structure is a kind of length is similar but borrelia is a larger borrelia is a little large and uh, it is uh, having a flat spiral and leptospira is a kind of spiral uh, is kind of bending at its one terminal right so in the dark field microscopy we can visualize it just something like that okay so that's the classification now some diseases associated with the spiral organisms for example say diseases like uh, caused by tryponema pallidum it is syphilis it's std it's a std dangerous std and if we look at leptospira it is a leptospira interrogans can cause a disease this is the species interrogans that is causing what we call as leptospirosis borrelia borrelia uh, Burgdorferi can cause Lyme disease in human and Borrelia recurrentis can cause epidemic relapsing fever, right? And spirillum can uh, cause my, um, it's a kind of fever like symptoms. We are not going to talk about this. We'll be talking about Triponema, Leptospira, as well as Borrelia in separate videos. And I hope that that is giving you a simple uh, basic idea. Uh, that's it. And I hope that's helpful. Thank you.